Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting here with the Anycubic Cobra S1 combo. We've got a single Ace Pro unit here sitting on the top, and I'm going to walk you through installing it and running your first test. We are going to do it according to Anycubic's recommendations on this included yellow paper. Let's get started. This right here is a Dollar Tree toolbox. It costs $1.25. In it are all my Anycubic accessories. I recommend doing something like this for all your printer brands or even specific printers. To get started, find this hub and find this bag that says hub screws. We are going to install it right here. Take these notches and line them up with these holes, just like this. And then it's a simple two screw installation one screw, two screws. Your kit came with an Allen wrench that fits it. Use that Allen wrench to install these screws. It's worth noting this is a plastic housing. Please don't over tighten these screws and risk cracking anything. You see this pigtail right here? It has six pins. It only fits in one port and that port is right here. Go ahead and plug it in. Despite being a snap-in connector, mine did not make a clicking noise. Yours might not either. Please don't force it. Directly above this hub, you'll notice a pre-installed PTFE tube. Take this PTFE tube and gently curve it and push it down into this hub. Do not pull test it. Your printer came with this cable. It looks like a 485 but it has a six pin on one side and a four pin on the other. These connectors only fit one way, and that is with the clip up. Four pin into the printer, six pin into the Ace Pro. The clip is on this side. Here we are looking at the back of the Ace Pro. We are going to connect four PTFE tubes, one to each slot. The Ace Pro has individual PTFE coupler locks. Gently remove them by turning them upward and popping them off. Be super careful and gentle when removing those locks. It's a very poor design decision to use these locks and there's very limited room to get them off. I went upward just to give myself more space and angular will actually help make it easier to remove them. With all the locks removed, gently press one tube into each coupler. Please note, the tube will go in several millimeters. If you don't feel that, give it a wiggle until you do feel that. If you don't feel that millimeter or two of travel, your PTFE tube is not fully installed and it will detach. Once all of them are installed, please avoid pull testing them, but you should be able to feel that they are not coming out. You may replace the blue clips. Please be gentle, they did not provide extras. I did mine by fitting it in place and then taking an Allen key, putting it over the top and pushing it down. An interesting note is that these connectors slide out. This may make dealing with the clips easier. However, without the tubes attached, it's kind of hard to move them. You're better off going about it without pulling them out. Moving back down to the hub we just worked with, there are four small PTFE couplers on the bottom. We will place one tube in each coupler. Do take note, there are no locks on these couplers. It will look like this. Your Ace Pro requires its own power cable. That connection is right here. Go ahead and plug that in. Do take note your Ace Pro also has an on off switch, zero for off, one for on. Your Ace Pro itself also needs a power cable and also has an on off switch. Take note on the printer 
down is off, up is on. This is the opposite of the Ace Pro, where down is on and up is off. Keep this in mind so you don't accidentally turn one on and one off. Plug the printer in and let's return to the front of the machine. To get started, be sure your Anycubic Cobra S1 is fully set up, updated, and calibrated. Slide the locking mechanism toward the logo and open the lid. We are going to install four PLA filaments. Before installing your filament, be sure the Ace Pro is turned on. That is the number one on the switch. On my Ace Pro, that position is down. Please note, these are not desiccant containers. These are vents for the Ace Pro's active drying. Let's go ahead and load our filament. I will start in slot one with any cubic PLA black. Simply drop the roll into the slot and stick the filament into the orange hole until the light blinks. Next up will be any cubic gray PLA. Feed that into slot two. Bamboo Lab PLA Basic Pink. Bamboo Lab PLA Basic Blue. Close the lid and push the lock. While many companies have modified their cardboard spools to be multi-material unit compatible, I suggest working with plastic whenever possible and testing any cardboard spool that you might be interested in working with to be sure your AMS, CFS, or Ace Pro like them. Next up, touch on the filament icon. The spools they sent me were not RFID. If they were RFID spools, they would automatically be detected and you'd see them right here. Since they are not, let's set them manually. We will touch this button here. We'll touch material. PLA is defaulted. However, to select it, we still have to enter this menu and press OK. You will now see it shows PLA. We will choose our color and our color is black. We now have a spool of black PLA in slot number one. We'll do the same for slot number two, choosing PLA and it's already gray. We'll move over to slot number three, PLA again, choose the color, pink, and the final one, slot number four, PLA, and that color is blue. We are not looking for an exact color match. We're looking for a representation that we can recognize when slicing. Here on the screen, we have a few options. We can use the filament drying feature or the filament backup feature. The dryer feature will turn on the active drying. When you press the button, you will hear that active drying begin. Your Anycubic Ace Pro 2 is now effectively a filament dryer. With the drying turned on, you have some options. Touching here, we can set the drying temperature. Touching here, we can set how long we'd like the drying to be. Right here is showing the temperature of the drying, and here is the countdown on how long the drying remains. Yes, you can print while drying on the Ace Pro. Underneath that is filament backup. Filament backup is exactly what it sounds like. If you put two spools of the same material and same color in the Ace Pro, when one spool runs out, it will resume using the next spool. In order to check your Ace Pro for a firmware update, touch the gear, touch Ace One information, and there you go. Your Ace One Pro needs a firmware update. Go ahead and press confirm. Unlike the S1, your Ace Pro will power cycle itself. However, if you'd like to be safe, you can go ahead and turn the Ace Pro off and back on again. While I don't generally recommend printing a G-code made by anybody but yourself, 
Anycubic does suggest our first test print is one of theirs. These test files are not stored in the USB drive. They are stored in the memory of the Cobra S1. To access them, touch this icon right here. Then touch local. Inside local, touch test model. On the storage of this printer, Anycubic has provided a number of test prints. Unfortunately, only one of them uses multicolor. This one. Here on this screen, you'll see some important options. Auto leveling, flow calibration, filament drying, and time lapse. You will also see how long this print is expected to take, the temperature of the print bed, the temperature of the nozzle, the filament being used, how many grams of that filament, and the colors being used. Keep in mind, the colors were programmed by the pre-included G-code. Therefore, they do not match up with the colors that are actually in my Ace Pro. Therefore, these colors obviously won't be printed. The machine will use the colors I chose in place of these colors. Since this is my first print, I will turn on flow calibration. I already have filament drying turned on, but if you'd like to do that, go ahead and turn that on. It will ask you for the temperature and how long. You can also choose to print while drying or print after drying. Four hours is reasonable. I will leave it there and press start. Keeping in mind, start will not start the print. Start will return you to this menu. Of course, we want to play with our fancy camera and create a time lapse. Go ahead and check time lapse. A first use test print of 14 hours, six minutes is absolutely absurd, but that's what they gave us and that's what we're going to use. Go ahead and press start printing. Here you'll see it wants us to match up the colors actually in the ACE Pro with the colors programmed in the G code. We have black, gray, pink, and blue. I'm going to make the gray blue. I'm going to make the green pink. I'm going to make the orange black. And I'm going to make the yellow blue. And there we have it. Each filament actually in the ACE Pro has been paired up to replace the color on the G code. When you're all ready, go ahead and press start printing. You will hear three beeps that sound like an error. They are not. You will hear the ACE Pro's active drying activate and the S1 itself will begin heating its bed and nozzle. When that's complete, it will begin printing and the time-lapse video will begin recording. I'll see you in 14 hours. If everything went well, your test print should complete successfully and you're on your way with multicolor printing using the Anycubic S1 and the Ace Pro. I printed three items. One is the multicolor test print on the machine. I stopped it halfway. It looks absolutely fantastic. All my first layers are clean. My infill and surfaces look good. This is a really nice print. Here is a Jiggly Shark using Bamboo Lab Basic PLA. Here is a Jiggly Dinosaur using Anycubic PLA. Both of them came absolutely fantastic. I'm Mr. Greg. We just set up the Anycubic Ace Pro and you're on 3D Rundown. I'm sitting here with the Anycubic Cobra. Is it Cobra? What's this thing called? Cobra S1. Two screws. <laughs>